Hi again. Um, do you remember? I said I was going to be reading um, another fairy tale from the classic fairy tale book. And I have it. It's called Beauty and the Beast. Okay. It's illustrated by David, David Long. Okay, here we go. Once upon a time, there was a merchant who had three beautiful daughters, but the youngest, called the eldest sisters, cared only for fine dresses and jewels, but the youngest, called, called Beauty, had a kind and gentle heart and was especially loved by her father. One day, the merchant was going off on a long journey, and he asked his daughters what they would like, like him to bring home. I like a fine emerald necklace, said the eldest, and a pearl necklace for me, cried the second. I would like you to bring yourself as soon as possible, said Beauty, and if you can find one, I would like a white rose. The two, the two sisters made fun of Beauty for asking their father to bring her a rose. You have lots of roses in your garden, they said, but I do not have a white one, said Beauty, and she wondered why they wanted jewels. The merchant did not forget his daughter's wishes, and before returning home, he brought an emerald necklace and a pearl necklace, but nowhere could he find a white rose for Beauty, for it was winter and snow was falling. As he was nearing home, the mer merchant missed his way in the snowstorm. He could not tell where he was. Just as he was about to turn around, he saw a light side and soon found himself at the door of a great castle. He hoped they would offer him shelter for the night. And as he went to knock on the door, he saw it was open. Not a servant was in sight. So he went inside in the great hall. He found a splendid... Okay, that's beautiful. I forgot to show you the picture on the front page. Not a servant was in sight, so he went inside. In the great hall, he found a splendid supper laid out. He sat down and enjoyed the feast. In the corner of the hall was an open door, and when he looked in, he saw a bedroom that looked as if it was prepared for him. The merchant was very tired, so he went to bed and slept soundly. In the morning, a fine suit had been laid out for him to wear, and in a heart Hardly breakfast awaited him in the hall. He would, well, he would have liked to thank his kind host, but still the merchant saw no one. As he walked through the garden on his way to the stable to collect his horse, he spied a beautiful rose book co covered with white blooms. Thinking of his daughter and her request, he reached out and picked the single rose. So, suddenly, a terrible roar sounded. Rose roar sounded from the bushes, and the long, ugly beast sprang out. Who is stealing my white rose? He growled. Growled. The poor merchant trembled and could hardly speak. I did not mean to steal. My daughter begged me to bring. Okay, look. Here's a picture. There's a couple of pictures. That's the big snowstorm, and that's the beast and the merchant. The beast. Merchant, beast, merchant, beast, and merchant, face to face. I did not mean to steal. My daughter begged me to bring her a white rose, and this is the only one I've ever I have seen. That it is my favorite rose, and anyone who touches it must die. But I'll let you go if you promise to bring the first thing that runs that runs into you to runs to you when you meet you meet with you when you meet to get home. The merchant agreed, and as he made his journey home, he hoped it might be the cat that be the cat that came out to meet him, and not his beloved dog.
But as he approached the house, it was his little daughter, Beauty, came running towards him. She turned so pale that when, he, and when she saw her father, Beauty thought, Beauty thought he must be very sick. He gave her the white rose and took her hand. He told her all, all that had happened to him and the promise he had made to Beast. But I'll never, never give you up, Beauty, he said. You must keep your promise, father, said Beauty. Perhaps he will not hurt me. So they prepared to return to the castle. They rode silently toward the forest, for they were too sad to speak. And at the castle, they found the front door open and a meal laid out in the great hall. Only this time, the table was set for two. They sat down, but Beauty and her father could not eat. Then at nine o'clock, they had a great roar and the beast appeared. He spoke gently to them, saying to the merchant, You may stay here tonight, but tomorrow you must go home and leave Beauty behind. Do not worry about her. She will have all she could wish for here. Father and daughter parted with great sadness. But Beauty soon became quite contained with her life in the castle. Beauty soon became... Her room was very pretty. With roses outside her window and on a table stood a wonderful mirror. Now there's a picture. Um, she was so pale when he saw Beauty running. In golden letters around the outside was written, See your wishes. Here screamed, What you long for, you will find. Okay, that's what the mirror is. I'll be able to wish myself home whenever I am unhappy, said Beauty to herself. And she often looked into a mirror to see what was happening to her father and sisters at home. For she spent every day amusing herself and saw no one until the evening when the beast joined her for supper. After they had eaten, Beauty would sing to the beast. One night he asked her, Do you think I am very ugly? His voice sounded so sad that, that Beauty found it a bit hard to answer him. You have a kind face, she said at last with a sigh, but you are really ugly. But you really are very ugly. A single tear ran down the beast's cheeks, beast cheek, and Beauty felt so sorry for him. I do like you very much, she assured him. Then will you marry me, Beauty? Oh no, I could never marry a beast, sobbed Beauty. Look, there's a picture. Picture she that's the beast and be singing and that's what be looking at her window. She she went to bed very sad and looked into the magic mirror. She asked to see her family again. The mirror painted a picture of her old home, and in the corner, Beauty saw her dear father lying ill in bed. The next day, Beauty could near play nor work, and could only wait until supper came so she could ask ask the beast if he would let her go home for just one week to visit her father. If you go home, if you go, you will never come back to me," said the beast. I promise you I'll come back in a week, dear beast. Let me go, please, pleaded Beauty. Very well, she said, but take this ring with you, and if you ever want to come back, put it on your finger. When you go to bed in the morning, you will find yourself here in your own room. That, that, that night, Beauty looked at the magic mirror and wished herself calm. She fell asleep on her bed tightly, clutching the ring, and when she woke, she was in her father's house. He wept with joy to see his little beauty again and began to get well. At the end of one week, beauty could not bear to leave her father, so she broke her pond, promised to the beak, and stayed another week. Week. Look, there's a picture. 
those are some pictures. Those are some pictures, so yeah. See? See? One night she had a strange dream. She dreamed that she was back in the beast garden, wandering about, and as she came to write Red Rose, Rose Book, she found the poor beast lying on the ground, and as he was looking for her dying, and she ran towards him, he cried out, Oh, Beauty, you have broken my heart, and I shall die without you. Beauty woke up from her dream, and so long to see her dear beast again that she reached up for the magic ring, slipped it onto her finger. When she next awoke, she found herself back in her pretty room in the beast's castle. Just as he had told her she would, remembering her dream, Beauty quickly ran out into the garden to see if he was there. When she reached the right rose, but she found the beast lying so stiff and quiet that she, that she thought he was dead. Oh, my dear beast, cried Beauty as she threw her arms around his neck. Please don't die, for I come back to take care of you, and I will marry you, for I love you with all my heart. She put her hand in her hands and wept. When she stood up, she could not see the beast instead. She threw the tears, she could only see a handsome young prince beside her. Who are you, and what have you done to my beast? asked Beauty. Do you not do you not remember do you not know me, dear beauty? said the prince. I am the beast of blood love and to whom you give life and happiness. A witch cast an evil spell over me, so that I think so that I took the form of an ugly beast, and nothing could set me free until a beautiful girl loved me and promised to marry me. If you really are my dear beast, then I will marry you, said Beauty. Together they went to the magic river, and when Beauty looked and she saw her father living in, in the rest of his days in the castle with her. When the prince looked into the mirror, he saw, he saw a wedding with Beauty, his bride, carrying a beacon, a beacon of white roses. Their wishes came true, and they lived happily ever after. There's a picture. That's the prince and the uh, um and Beauty. There inside and that's the dream she had gotten oh, well that was it for the first story the next story i'm going to be reading the next story in the next video so, I'll see you again in the next video. I'm going to read another story from the fairy tale books. And remember, this book's very old, so I won't be reading so fast or so slow. Book's very old. I'm going to turn the pages quite not so fast. Okay? So, I'll see you later in the next video. Bye! See you later!